So I was always interested in art because when I was like three or four, I had an older sister. She's like 10 years older than me. And she took a drawing class in middle school. And I was like, what are you doing? She's like, drawing. I was like, that looks cool. I want to draw too. And so I would draw next to her. And she kind of was the person that got it started. And then when I was in the sixth grade, my oldest sister was in college. And she had taken an art history course. And she couldn't sell her book back. So she's like, hey, you like art? Here you go. And this thing was amazing. Like, you know, like opened up this whole world that I didn't even know it existed. Then I graduated high school and then I went to school at Boise State. What I wanted was somebody to give me instruction on this is how you draw. This is how you draw a foot. This is how you draw a hand. This is how you draw a head. Uh, it was a kind of school that, uh, you know, a lot of the instructors were coming out of like the beatnik way of instruction, which was basically no instruction. Later, I, uh, you know, would appreciate it because I realized what it didn't do for my technical skill. It did a lot for trying to foster creativity. I wanted to go to a school that would be able to fill in the gaps, these education gaps. I got accepted to the New York Academy of Art. I would say after the first year, I really saw a huge significant jump in my technical abilities. So I was pretty happy about that. What I was really interested in were three basic things. The human figure, landscape, and still life. The landscape took a back seat and I was polishing my ability to draw the human figure. Once I got proficient enough, I, I wanted to like combine the two. And then when I came back from New York, I moved back to Idaho. Felt like I was armed with this, this same experience and same point of view, but now this technical ability to carry out these ideas that had been hanging around my head for the last 10 years or something. So my very first ambitious project was that big landscape that's in there, which was done in the span of four years. What's interesting about landscape painting is that people have no idea how difficult it is. If you look at people like Andrew Wyeth, right, if you look at some of his paintings, he could make a fence post be some of the, one of the most interesting things that you've ever seen. If you have that belief and you have that conviction, I think you can make Southwest painting a little bit more interesting. So I, f I feel like you could take this anywhere, you know, and that to me is where the narrative is. Teaching has given me kind of a good perspective to talk to other people, do demonstrations, show my work. Being a teacher puts you either in the driver's seat or in the passenger seat at all times. So sometimes the student is the driver and you're trying to help them navigate. And it's really cool because you get to hear their ambitions and where they want to take something. And if you're a good teacher, you pay attention and you wait until it's the right time for you to interject. If you're not a good teacher, and you have an agenda, then you're constantly trying to drive them, you know? So it's kind of a tricky thing. Uh, when you're the driver, say I'm doing a demonstration, uh, you also have to be cautious not to take it too far to the point where you're sort of inferring that they should paint like you or draw like you. So it's a good way to like check yourself and keep enough interest, do enough activity where you're actually doing some painting, helping people. I don't know, it's cool. It's a, it's a very give and take kind of you know, relationship, so.